Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming here today. Um, I'm Stephanie Kunze. I wanted to thank some of the elected officials who have joined me today. Uh, we have Councilwoman Kelly McGivern from Hilliard City Council, uh, Councilwoman Debbie Johnson, and Councilman Eric Yasinoff from Upper Arlington City Council. We have our county recorder Daphne Hawk here and also our Norwich Township trustee Tim Roberts. Thank you all for coming here today. Um, we are here today just to discuss basically the negative um, ads that have come against me by my opponent's party and um, kind of basically talk about the negative ads and the negative campaigning that is going on. Um, as of today, there are over half a dozen mailers that have been sent out by my opponent that are deliberately misleading, um, and some are outright lies, and others are just uh, offensive to women. So before I get into detail, I would like to ask uh, former Ohio Attorney General and State Auditor uh, Betty Montgomery to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie, and thank you all for being here today. Um, I, I, it was a pleasure when I was asked to, to come and speak on behalf of Stephanie. I think she's going to make a wonderful state representative. Uh, she has a proven background and capacity to do the work that needs to be done. I know that women are uh, that women from a variety of backgrounds and experiences play extremely important parts in, in, in government. I remember when I first went to the General Assembly and I was the third woman in my caucus, uh, there weren't that many women, and there was only one, I think, in there was only one woman in the Democrat caucus. That's why I currently serve as the chairman of the Joanne Davidson Ohio Leadership Institute, um, a program that has been put together over the last 13 years to recruit and train women to be become engaged in the political process, both in front of the podium and behind the podium. Uh, we try to encourage women in business and civic leadership to assume more pro prominent roles in their communities um, and in their governments, both local, state, and national. I, uh, the, the program was named after Speaker Joanne Davidson. All of us have a huge respect for her and what she has accomplished in her lifetime in building uh, uh, a highly qualified, and, and being an example for all of us, um, in what it means to be a qualified woman in government. Um, you know, uh, Stephanie talked about uh, the negative ads that have come out against her. And of course, in a political campaign, we all get we, we, we get negative ads, but these particular mailers that I've seen uh, are particularly demeaning and, and frankly, in light of the Democrats' discussion about the Republican war on women, I, I just find it remarkable that what, we, what we're seeing. Uh, in April, Democrat strategist Hillary Rosen said of Ann Romney, who raised five sons, that she had, quote, never worked a day in her life. And Rosen's comments reignited the mom culture war that, uh, you know, work home debate that, uh, frankly, the women's movement was all about, to allow women to be who they wanted to be, whether they worked in the home or outside of the home. Uh, and we go back uh, to uh, <laughs> reignited that argument that went all the way back to Hillary Clinton. You remember when she was, when her husband was first elected and she, she was, uh, there was a conversation with her in 1992 when she said, is instead of working as a lawyer, lawyer, she should have stayed home. She could have stayed home and baked cookies. Again, a demeaning comment on women who decide that either for their lifetime or for their children's lifetime, they choose to be in the home raising their children. Let's talk, frankly, about the Republican record uh, when it comes to the quote war on women. In, in the 2010 midterm elections, the gender gap disappeared for the first time since the Reagan era. More Republican women were elected to the House than ever before, and four out of six current female governors are Republican. In 2010, Republicans won the women's vote over Democrats, 49% to 48%, at least that's what, the, that's what the exit polls have told us. Ever since, the Democrat political strategy has been to make female voters who comprise more than half of the electorate their number one target. The stakes are high. The Democrats can't afford to lose the women's vote again if they expect to win the White House or the Senate. And so you see this, uh, this manufactured quote of war on women uh, being discussed about Republicans. The problem for Democrats is they can't run on their record. And that's why you see them running negative ads. And that's why you see them running negative ads against uh, Stephanie. 
the poverty rate among women now is the highest it's been in nearly two decades. 5.2 million women are unemployed. According to the National Women's Law Center, of the 2.7 million jobs created since 2009, only 500, 600, 567,000 have gone to women. That says it in a, in a nutshell. Um, and that we're here to support Stephanie's candidacy. We're here to talk about the fact that the Republican Party is very, very much inclusive and strong with women. And I have an opportunity to introduce one of those strong women, uh, Cheryl Grossman, who is the Assistant Majority Whip in the, in the House, uh, rose to leadership almost immediately upon being elected. Be no surprise, having been the mayor um, uh, in Grove City uh, for many years, and uh, demonstrated her leadership from the time that she was, frankly, in school. Uh, and I am very honored to be able to uh, introduce Cheryl to come. Betty, I appreciate those kind words, and I'm very proud to be here on behalf of Stephanie Kunze, who I know will be a, a, an important addition to the Ohio House as we continue to work really hard to get Ohio out of a very difficult situation that we're in. We hear so much about the so-called war on women, but I think it's time women take another look at who's waging war on women. But the Democrats are engaged with right now is damaging for women because they're treating them as monolithic beings who all think alike with identical goals, identical dreams, and identical concerns. Well, let me tell you something. That's not how I operate. That's not how Stephanie operates. But while we share some things in common, raising our children, children <coughs> providing for our families, and striving for quality education, we are all individuals. We are not obsessed with contraception and abortion, as the Democrats would want us to believe. We care about important things like the economy, we want quality jobs, and we want leaders in Columbus and in Washington who represent all of our interests, not just their narrowly focused goals that they have if they are elected. I'm proud to stand beside Stephanie because she shares my beliefs and visions for our state. Women have played a critical role in our country, often without a lot of attention and fanfare. But I don't think most women are concerned about that. They simply want the best for their children and for their grandchildren. That is not accomplished by having leaders speak down to women, targeting solely the issues they believe will gain with quick political points and earn votes. Women know what's going on. They feel the effects of a bad economy as much as men do. They feel the strain of rising gas prices, rising food prices, rising health care prices, all while the down economy has resulted in lower wages and job losses. More than 400,000 women have lost their jobs in the last four years. They are single moms trying to, to provide for their children. They are college graduates trying to find that first job. And they are elderly women who need to supplement their income. Our country is facing difficult times and we must come together if we are to, if we are to pull together through continuing though continuing aiming to divide as the Democrats continue to do. But I believe their message has been exposed for what it is, a desperate political ploy sponsored by a desperate political party. We have to elect Stephanie. We need people and partners in the Ohio House that care about the future of all the people of Ohio. And I believe that Stephanie will do an outstanding job to represent her district and to help make that happen as we work together to make Ohio a great place to live and at this time, I'd like to introduce a freshman legislator who was just finishing up her first term, and she was the former mayor of Westerville in Gonzales. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let's, let, let's hear it for uh, Stephanie and, and, and Cheryl and Betty who came out today. Oh, we gotta get tough, we gotta get strong. Um, I wanna tell you just a little bit about myself. You know, women have come a long way, and I've worked really hard to get where I am today. I was mayor of Westerville. I served on city council for eight years. I served on planning commission, the recreation advisory board, telecommunications commission. I graduated from college, Ottervine. Um, I am married, I have three children, and I got elected to the state house as a state representative. And I serve on finance, I'm vice chair of health and aging, and I serve on public utilities and several other committees. I worked very hard as a woman to get to where I am today. 
And I am so fortunate to be here to, you know, support Stephanie Kunze in this, in this race. And I am proud to have behind me all Republican women that are here. We care about each other. We care about our fellow women. We strive to lift each other up. We do not tear each other down. And we are very successful and we're very strong. And we wanna help each other. We wanna help, we wanna help women to achieve an American dream, to find good jobs here in Ohio. I am a mother of two daughters. And I always try to give my daughters the tools necessary to be successful so that they can live the American dream. The antiquated perception of the old fashioned woman who stays at home, who submits to her husband, who lacks a voice in the household is quite frankly over. Women have the freedom to earn money, to get a job and to see their successes. But women have become the political pawn of the Ohio Democratic Party, and this is just unacceptable. They have basically reduced us to this, vacuuming underneath the husband, our husband's feet. It's ridiculous. Um, this is offensive. It's a very degrading message uh, to send not only to working women, but to the women that stay home and raise their children, that keep their households afloat. It is offensive and degrading to the young girls, to my daughters, who look up to people like Betty Montgomery and Representative Grossman here as leaders. And the message that Maureen Reedy's allies are sending within the party to, our, to the next generation uh, portraying women this way is unacceptable and it is offensive. And I don't see how Maureen Reedy can uh, teach and educate our children and condone this message of sexism. It's unacceptable. Those, you know, women have come a very long way um, and we are more powerful than ever. And I just, it's, it's disappointing that the Democratic Party is just using women as just another piece of the game. So I, I, the message I have out there is women need to get behind a real woman and that is Stephanie Coonsy. Thank you. announce and I encourage women out there that they need to get on Facebook they need to get quit on Twitter and and look for women for Coonsy and and get behind her she's she's a great candidate she's going to be a wonderful addition to the Ohio House you have questions I was going to say a couple more thank you uh, thank you all ladies for your kind words um, I was going to talk a little bit about um, some of the misleading mailers uh, that my opponent has sent out um, it's interesting to me the, the first one that we received was this one accusing me of being a lot going on here the, accusing me of being a uh, partisan politician and a political activist and it's funny when we're talking about the war on women um, three years ago when I ran for Hilliard City Council I'd been a stay-at-home mom for 10 years and was a school secretary and the men that were advising me on my political campaign said, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone that you are uh, what you do. And um, it's funny because now with two and a half years experience on council, I have a woman who should uh, really be um, advocating for women to step out into a city council role or a government role, uh, calling me an out of touch um, partisan activist and a poli career politician. So. I find that offensive, and I do not work at a law firm, for the record. Um, <laughs> I actually work with my uh, one of my founders this year, Lori Huff, of Local Level, which is a, a website that encourages people to shop and buy and use local businesses to support um, our cities and our schools through tax dollars. That if you keep them in your own community, then that's for us a win-win. So um, th uh, there's just a barrage of p pieces that you can see. This one that I'm a typical politician. Um, the, the latest ones, I think, though, are the ones I keep getting the most questions about. When I'm, well, this one I'm going to talk about, too, because I don't really know who this insurance company is that denies coverage for women, but both of my grandmothers died of uterine and ovarian cancer, so trust me, this is, I don't know what this is about. Um, the iPad ones, however, are the ones I keep getting the most questions about, and these are really the ones that contain the most misinformation, misleading information. Um, first of all, City Council is proud to vote. We've, we've 
bought eight refurbished iPads for city council at the cost of $2,700. Um, they are saving $4,100 annually for the city and for taxpayers in Hilliard. Uh, not to mention the 10 reams of paper and the gas that our clerk was using in our car driving around to all seven of us houses each Friday to deliver a giant packet. Um, the other one states that I was playing citizen's arrest and it, it insinuates that somehow law enforcement in our city is not going to be as safe because of cuts um, due to who's spending money on the iPads. And I want to tell you that we just hired uh, two new police officers in the city of Hilliard. They were uh, sworn in. I was at the ceremony last month. So these are just not true. Um, what I really want to say, though, is that we were talking about this piece a lot, and Ann kind of brought it up. And for some, whatever it is about this piece, um, it struck a chord with many different <coughs> women, friends. Um, like I said, I was a stay-at-home mom. I was raised by a stay-at-home mom. I have a lot of friends who have worked very hard in their careers and a lot of friends that have stayed at home. And when I ran for city council, I was supported by both of those groups of people. Um, and I think that as a woman, we should be supporting and lifting each other up. We should not be tearing each other down. We shouldn't, I know that this is a political campaign and as was said before, um, if you're going to attack me, please attack me on something that's true in my record, that's um, not just misleading or false. Uh, the other thing I would like to say um, is that I am the mother of two daughters. My oldest daughter, Hannah, is not able to be here today. She's a cross-country runner, and she's uh, in practice right now preparing for the OCCs tomorrow. And my youngest daughter, Abby, is here today. Um, we just got back from D.C., actually, an eighth grade trip to D.C. So um, as a mom, I obviously am striving to be a good role model and a good example to my daughters. And I've always told them that if you want to stay home and raise your kids, do it. If you want to have a career, do it. But do whatever it is that God intended you to do and made you to be. And one of those, um, just to end on this, when I saw the movie Aquila and the Bee several years back, um, I was so struck by one of the quotes that was in that movie that I went home and Googled it and printed it out on a piece of paper and hung it in my kids' rooms. Abby was shaking her head. She's like, don't tell. Uh, but, here, but it is so true. This is what I think we should be doing um, as women, as mothers, as politicians, um, whatever your walk of life is, we should be encouraging each other. And the quote is from Marianne Williamson. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? We were born to mani make manifest the glory of God that is within us. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. So it's my hope that we will uh, encourage each other to let our own light shine.